Greetings everybody and welcome to my 7 days to die modding tutorial series. We are now on episode 5. So in the last in the last episode guys we learned how to add craft areas to our recipes in order to make them need to use certain workstations to allow them to be crafted. So we added the workbench crafting station to our acid recipe and we also adjusted the gunpowder recipe that currently only was craftable in the backpack to use the campfire instead and we even made it require a beaker to use as well. In this episode we're going to go ahead and look at how to add forge recipes. Now if you manage to follow in the, in the last tutorial this will actually be pretty easy because there is not much difference to doing forge recipes compared to other recipes. However there is a couple of changes that we need to note. Now we're going to go ahead first of all and add a new recipe. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and uh, come into here. I'm actually going to take this comment out right here and we're going to put it right here because we're going to go ahead and add a new recipe inside our append tag. You can add multiple recipes within the append tag if you want to as long as the X path is set to recipes. But what we're going to do, we're going to add a solar cell recipe to the forge and make it require a crucible. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty cool one. So you may have already come up with a recipe for a solar bank because I remember I said as, a, as an exercise from one of my previous episodes, trying to make the solar bank craftable or a solar cell craftable would be pretty cool. But for example, what if you wanted to do it from the forge? Well, let's go ahead and make sure the solar cell is specified correctly. So first of all, I want to go into my vanilla files. So on the desktop, of course, I made my shortcut like we made in the first episode. I'm going to go data config. Now, because I don't know what the solar cell is called, I'm going to go into my localization file. And then I'm just going to type in solar. OK, let's just type in solar and see what happens. So there's collapsed solar bank. There is the solar bank and there is the solar cell. So the solar cell it appears like this in game, but in code, it appears like this solar and then a capital C cell, all one word. So, this is what we want to make a recipe for. So, let's go ahead and add a recipe. So, we're going to go recipe name equals solar or solar cell. And I managed to copy it right here. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close out the recipe tag and we can go ahead and make this work in the forge. Now, you may have seen for some of the forging recipes in the recipes file. Uh, let me just type in forge here because we should, we should see it here. Um, let's go and do that. Right, so for example, um, if I go all the way down here. Okay, so let's have a look at the, um, the rebar frame block, right? This, require, this gives you one of them and it is crafted in the forge and it has a couple of tags that we're not going to worry about for now. But you can see the important area. The first thing we want to do is probably specify that, um, aside from the count, of course, um, so let's say this gives us one. So we're going to do our count property. So count equals one. But then the other thing is the craft area is the forge. OK, so this is going to be the first thing we need to do now. There is a difference between forged recipes and other recipes that use like uh, workstations or campfires and stuff. And that's it. That is that the forge uses materials rather than um, rather than actual. It's, a, it's a, like the, the base items like scrap iron, scrap lead. It uses a material based version of that item. Now, this might sound confusing, but when you put um, when you put like one piece of scrap iron into the forge, it gets transferred to one piece of material iron or a unit of iron now there are units of material in the recipe so if i type in uh, if we have a look at a forge recipe you'll notice that the ingredient name is unit underscore and then the name of the material like iron or unit underscore clay now this is uh, this is all well and good um so just remember whenever you're adding a forge recipe you need to be using the units so you have unit iron unit clay unit brass yeah uh, yeah unit brass unit lead um, and unit glass uh, and unit stone. So those those three are the six forge units that come with the vanilla game. So instead of using, for example, a uh, resource scrap iron like you would for anything, any other recipe that's not in a forge, you need to instead use unit iron. They look the same in game, but they are very, very different. So let's say, for example, our solar cell is going to require 
some glass right so i think um i think it's unit glass under here let's just double check so let me have a little look let's press ctrl f i'm going to type unit underscore glass does that exist yes it does so yeah here, here you go so you've got glass stone lead and clay so what we're going to do we're going to say our solar cell is going to require some glass some lead some iron and some clay to make it work okay it's going to be an expensive recipe too so let's go ingredient name and this time we're going to go unit underscore so it's going to require glass at first and let's say it requires 200 so pretty expensive and then ingredient name and then we can go unit underscore lead and let me just tab this across a bit make it a bit easier to read uh, and we're going to say it requires 500 units of lead and then ingredient name equals unit underscore iron and that's going to require maybe i don't know 100 units of iron that should do and finally ingredient name oh let's make sure i spell ingredient right as well otherwise that's ingredient and that's not right uh, ingredient name equals unit of clay so let's go ahead and do that and we're going to say count and let's say it requires 50 uh, 50 units of clay to make it work so this is going to allow us to go ahead and craft it in the forge however there is one very important tag that we need as well to include otherwise the craft recipe would not use the forge materials and we use stuff from your backpack but of course the unit materials are never in your backpack they're only ever in the forge so what we need to do is we need to add this property right here material based equals true okay so we're going to go ahead and add this guy right here because otherwise if we don't add this tag it will try and pull resources from your backpack rather than the forge so material based equals true literally all that does is it means take the materials from the forge or the workstation you're crafting on and don't look in the player backpack that's literally all it does so you don't have to worry about anything else just material base is true means take from the workstation and not the player backpack and the craft area is forge now if we go ahead and do this this should work so why don't we go ahead and uh, pop in game and let's see if our solar cell is now craftable on the forge hopefully it is let's have a look so let's go and launch the game we'll load this guy up and then once we have a look we should see in our tutorial world let's go ahead and uh, push down f1 make sure we didn't have any errors which hopefully we didn't but you know i'm uh, i'm prone to spelling mistakes every now and then just like any other fox any other blind bugger we're prone to spelling mistakes but let's see looks like we did okay so hopefully with all that said and done we should now have Oh, there goes uh, there goes a can. We should have a, a forge recipe to use. So let's go and see now. Let's just type in solar cell and see what happens. Here we go. As you can see, the solar cell is now craftable, and you can see that it requires 200 sand, 500 lead, uh, 100 iron, and 50 clay. And this is now a forged base recipe, which is awesome. So uh, if I was to, ooh, I didn't want to open my internet. If I was to open the forge, uh, put down the forge. So let's go creative mode and press U. And then type in forge here. If I was to go and put down one of these things, I know, just place it there. We should see now that the solar cell is right there, as you can see. So this takes seven minutes and five seconds to craft one of these things, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so quite a long time to make it. Um, but as you can see, the materials are now here. So you can see that it's now highlighting uh, each of the materials that I currently have not met the requirements for in red. Now, what we could do is we could also add a requirement for a crucible to be in the forge in order to make this work because otherwise uh, people could start crafting solar cells in the early game so why don't we go ahead and make it require a crucible as well so let's go um craft underscore tool and i believe it's called tool crucible so craft tool equals tool crucible let me just double check that uh, so let's go and copy this guy and let's go and save this for now and in the vanilla recipes file do we have a crucible uh let's see oh it's tool forge crucible there you go good thing we checked okay so it's actually tool forge crucible okay so we're gonna go ahead and do that and now if we load up the game again this thing should require a crucible in the crafting recipe now 
You'll also remember that seven minutes was a really, really long time to craft it. For example, what if we wanted to make it less time? Because, you know, seven minutes is a really long time to wait. And if you want to, you know, if you're already spending tons of resources, maybe you don't want to spend tons of time. How can we adjust the craft time directly? Well, fortunately for us, there is a parameter called craft underscore time. Right. Now, craft time allows you to specify in seconds how long it takes you to craft something. So if you want it to take five minutes, for example, you put, well, you work it out. Five times 60 is 300. Put in 300, and this thing will now take five minutes to craft instead of like the seven minutes and two seconds that it did before. Let me go and load up the game again, and I will show you that now that we've specified a craft time, it should be uh, it should be taking slightly less time to craft. Craft time can be really, really useful, especially if you have like a lot of materials that add a lot of time to your crafting. We're going to get more into that when we look at um, the items XML, um, probably in a more intermediate tutorial. For now, just believe me that um, that the craft time can be adjusted directly in recipes, and it's the, the easiest way to do it if you want to specify a craft time for each of the items that you add. I always use craft time uh, when it comes to crafting recipes because it allows me to specify exactly uh, how long it's going to craft something and then I can balance my modlet around that rather than having to adjust each item's uh, forge values and stuff like that to make it more or less time which affects every other item too. So now if I go into the forge we should see that my solar cell now requires a crucible which is awesome and you can see that now it only takes five minutes to craft one of these things. How awesome is that? So that means now that if we have the solar cell, we can now craft tier one solar cells on the forge. Now, at a later point in time, once we get to know the progression system and the buff system, I will come back to this and I will show you how to actually make it so that you can craft higher quality versions of this when you perk up into a certain skill. For now, I'm not going to go ahead and cover that because that's beyond the scope of this one. I just wanted to show you how to add some recipes to a forge and go ahead and make some changes. Now, let's see if we wanted to go ahead and make some changes to an existing recipe. So currently, I've shown you how to use a new recipe. But what if we wanted to go and find an existing recipe and make a change to that? Um, let's see. Um, why don't we say... Let's say we wanted to make changes to a recipe to make it use a forge instead. Because that sounds like it could be a pretty good idea. Um, okay, how about the iron, the iron club, right? Currently, the iron club is crafted outside of the forge. But what if we wanted to make it be crafted inside the forge? Well, there's a couple of things we're going to need to do. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add the material-based uh, tag and the craft area um, tag attributes to the recipe. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to need to remove all these ingredients. And the third thing we're going to need to do is make it forge compatible. OK, so we're going to go ahead and see if we can make the Iron Reinforced Club craftable in the forge. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, this might sound. Uh, oh, there's my uh, there's my complete list of mod tutorials. Uh, if you guys wanted to have a look at what's coming, um, there is going to be quite a few things to do here. But trust me, we're going to do it step by step and make it as easy as we can to follow. So this is going to make the Iron Reinforced Club craftable in the forge instead of the backpack. OK, so here's what we're going to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and add this. We want to add craft area equals forge and material based equals true. Now, in the last episode, you guys um, oh, they kind of messed out there in my notepad. So material base equals, uh, if I add this, true. Now, if you followed along in the last episode, you know that we can use the set attribute X path in order to do this very, very easily. And of course, this time, because there is um, only one way to make an iron club, there is only one recipe for it. We don't have to be so specific on the recipe. But essentially, we want to add this tag here, craft area equals forge, and this tag, material based equals true. And these are both attributes. So when we're adding new attributes to an element, of course, we're going to use the set attribute X path. So let's go ahead and take this out for now. And let's see what happens here. So let's go to our current recipes one. And we're going to start. So let's go and do some set attributes. So we're going to go set attribute X path equals. And remember, we also need a name parameter for set attribute as well. Now we're going to need two of these. OK, so let's go ahead and actually copy this. 
and then we're going to go ahead and put this down here if my mouse doesn't freeze up so we're going to need two of these things now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify that we're going to do the easy bit first let's specify the new attributes that we want to add so one of them was called craft underscore area so just like in the example above um, adding the craft area but this time instead of campfire it's going to be forge and then the other attribute that we wanted to specify was material based so material, material underscore based and that we wanted to assign to true okay by default it's actually set to false um, if you don't specify it but yeah material based equals true is the other attribute that we wanted to add so now let's work on the x path and luckily for us the x path is going to be exactly the same for both of these because we're adjusting it on the same recipe so uh, and this time we're not making any changes to a recipe that will uh, otherwise break a previous x path like this one so for example this one i had to specify a slightly different x path because after we'd assigned this one here um, the gunpowder did have a craft area so this x path wouldn't work so yeah we had to do it slightly differently but this time it's going to be a bit more simpler so let's go recipes and then we want to say we want to find the recipe in there who has a name attribute of and i believe it was called melee club iron right there we go so we're going to say melee club iron and luckily for us the x path for both of these is going to be exactly the same so i can go ahead and put it right there so what this is going to do now is it's going to add the craft area of forge a material based equals true um, attributes with their values to the recipe melee club iron so essentially that's just going to do what i illustrated before it's going to then add the craft area and the material based stuff right here so that's the first thing the next thing we want to do is currently these ingredients are not used um are not used in a forge so forged iron wood leather and duct tape are not material type ingredients they're not unit types so we wanted to go and transfer these to unit types of ingredients now unfortunately it seems that only iron is going to be used for here but let's say for example just just for uh just for argument's sake that it requires some iron some lead and some clay for our iron reinforced club okay so what we're going to do the first thing we need to do is select each of these ingredients and remove them now if you guys remember back to a previous episode we did have a remove x path example back up here so if we wanted to remove all the if we wanted to remove a specific ingredient like we did for the concrete mix removing the sand you can go ahead and specify the recipe then specify the ingredient now if you specify one ingredient like this it will remove just that one but if you just specify any ingredient tag it can remove all of them so let's go ahead and try it remove x path equals and let's go ahead and this is a self-closing tag we don't need to worry about that then we're going to say recipes and then find the recipe whose name equals melee club iron right now if we leave it like this this will delete the iron reinforced club recipe we don't want to do that all we want it to do is delete the ingredients inside it so we're going to go forward slash ingredient there you go and now what that's going to do is it's going to do the way it's going to work is it's first of all the parser is going to look for the recipe who's called melee club iron so it's going to come here and it's going to be like is this the recipe i want to use no that's a knife is this the one i want to use yes it is and then from here it's going to then look inside this recipe and say okay which of these tags are ingredients this one this one this one and this one and then it's going to go right well this is what i've got selected goodbye and it's going to go ahead and remove all of those guys right there so this is going to go ahead and remove all of these ingredients from this so now that we've got the ingredients removed we can now add our new ones and remember to add new elements we use the append x path so let's go ahead and do append right so now we're going to say append x path and this time we want to add new ingredients to the recipe right so we're going to go recipes slash recipe whose name equals melee club iron and that is all we need to do and then we need to close our append tag and then right here is where we would add new ingredients so we can just say ingredient name equals and then we can go unit underscore iron and count let's say it requires like 50 iron and then ingredient not ingredient ingredient name and this time we're going to say it requires some lead count equals 10 and then ingredient 
name is clay so unit underscore clay not class clay count and uh, let's say it requires 20 clay so now what is going to done is we can now look through the step by step so essentially we've added the craft area of forge to the melee club iron recipe we've also added the material based true attribute to melee club iron we've then gone ahead and removed all the ingredients from this recipe and then we've gone ahead and appended our own ingredients to the recipe how cool is that so now once we go ahead and do that this should work now the other thing i'm going to do is this is going to cause um this is going to cause issues right here um i'm going to remove this effect group right here um now what this effect group does is um a little bit later on i'll get more into this but essentially this means that as you craft high quality ones it takes more of the same materials to craft it so this is why like tier twos require like twice as many things tier threes require three times as many things for example um this this line right here just makes it more expensive to craft as you level up however I don't want this, right? We don't we don't want this bit here. So the last thing we're gonna do is just to make things easier on ourselves, is we are gonna remove the effect group. So we're gonna go remove xpath equals and then recipes and then recipe whose name equals melee club iron and we want to remove the effect group. So any effect groups that are in that recipe we want to remove as well. Okay, I think we can probably uh, move that up here so it's a bit more readable. So yeah, we're removing the ingredients in the effect group, and then we're going ahead and adding our own ingredients. Now, believe it or not, there is a way to reduce this X path even further. What you can do is instead of using the name of the node itself or the name of the element itself, you can use an asterisk to specify a wildcard, as in to say match everything so for example if i wanted to remove every node within here i could do this instead so these two above are going to be equivalent to this so i could say remove x path equals recipes and then find the recipe whose name equals melee club iron and then what i could do instead of specifying the node directly by name if i just put an asterisk right here that means find any node beneath it and remove it so anything directly beneath it no matter what it's called find it and get rid of it so these two lines here are equivalent to this line here you can do it however you like if you find it easier to specify it line by line like this it will make it clearer and then you can also remove stuff but if you want the quick the the quickest workaround you can also do it this way um i'm going to leave both of these in here and i will comment out the second one um just so um and, and i will just say this is equivalent to the above to remove x paths statements okay so this guy right here i'm just going to comment it out but just know that there is a way that you can specify more than just one type of element you can specify any element by using the asterisk which is really really nice let's go ahead and just like compress this back together again so it's kind of all in the same thing and let's go and check now that this works there might be some XPath errors right here that I get, but if there are, we can go ahead and fix them and we can go and do a little bit of debugging. I don't know if there's going to be XPath errors until we actually go ahead and try this out. So let's go into the Steam and let's launch the game again. And let's see if our Iron Reinforced Club is now required to be crafted in the Forge and it has the right materials assigned. Hopefully, if all said and done, it will be. Now, I hope you guys have managed to follow along to this point, because if you have, it means you've pretty much got most of the things to do with recipes down, and you're now very easily able to add, manipulate, and remove recipes at will. Because what I've shown you in this tutorial pretty much is a combination of everything that we've done up to this point in the last few tutorials. So we've done some more XPaths, we've used all the different types, we've used append, set, um, we've done set attribute, remove, we've done all those kind of things. Um, so hopefully, this means that if you guys have been following the previous tutorials, this should just be kind of a, a summary of everything we've done up to this point. Okay, did we get any yellow text first? Let's check. Uh, we did not. So now, if we look in here, we should see, if we're lucky, uh, the Iron Reinforced Club appearing in here. And there it is. Look at that. The Iron Reinforced Club is now appearing in the forge and it requires a schematic still, but that's fine. As you can see now, it takes 50 iron units 10 lead units and 20 clay units in order to craft it which is absolutely awesome 
like a wind club, but more durable and does more damage. Repair the repair kit and scrap to iron. Nice. So yeah, of course, there is still the unlocking stuff. If you wanted to remove the fact that this needs to be unlocked by a perk, you could go ahead and remo remove the learnable tag if you wanted to do that. However, this is pretty much going to cover it for this tutorial. So now that you got to this point, guys, you should be able to go ahead add to and add, adjust, append, remove ingredients from, and remove entire recipes using XPath and in modlet form. So hopefully you guys have managed to follow along to here. I'm sure you have, because like I said, you guys are a smart lot, probably a lot smarter than I am. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next tutorial, where we're actually going to start looking at a different XML file. This time, we're going to look at the items XML file, and I'm going to show you how to add and remove items from the game, so you can start adding your own custom stuff. But for now, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. So until then, bye!